I was always told that Hitler is the most evil man of all time. That is what was represented to me, and that is what I was told in school, you know, and so forth. But I always say that it is very important to educate yourself outside of school. Do it. Educate yourself outside of school. Don't be pulled down or pinned down only by what it gets given in school because the school is a system that is directly linked to, to the government and the governments always have an, 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 an agenda for their populace to be taught certain things and not be taught certain things. History is written by the conquerors, you know, not the conquered. So <laughs> always give yourself a full, full education beyond just the school system because school, that's not the only education you should be receiving. And to that, let's look at King Leopold II. So, King Leopold II is just a guy who I never heard of. All through my schooling, all through my education, I never heard about him. And in media, in society, and everything, the image of evil, of evil, horrible evil was that was represented was always Hitler. And Hitler was one evil bastard. A guy was one evil, devilish bastard for what he did to the Jews, which is just, you know, one of the worst crimes in history. One of, not the worst, but one of the worst crimes in history. So in my mind, I always thought, no, yeah, Hitler, he's the most evil person in the world. Like, just saying the name, that just represents evil. Like, you know, there's like Satan, the devil, and then there's Hitler. Um, but as is the case with society and everything, what you're given, what is perpetuated, isn't always the whole truth. And it is important that you research, read, research, read. I don't even know, I, I think, and I came about King Leopold II by mistake. I don't know whether I was reading something on the internet or someone came through. It's just one of these things that just pop off in media and then you then read about it. Um, so let's read about what Homeboy did. Let's just literally read about it. So, Leopold II amassed so first, let's just see who this guy is. So let's, let's see who this, who, this, who, this, who this ugly bastard is. So this prick, Leopold II, was the second king of the Belgians from 1865 to 1909, and through his own efforts, the owner and absolute ruler of the Congo Free State from 1885 to 1908. Uh, Leopold was the founder. Hopefully you guys can see this here. Leopold was the founder and sole owner of the Congo Free State, a private product undertaken on his own behalf. Um, he used Henry Morton Stanley to help him lay claim to the Congo, to, to the Congo, the present-day Democratic Republic of the Congo. So, I'll speak specifically just to the um, what he did in Congo. So, so Congo Free State. Um, okay, boom, 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 boom. Obtaining the Congo Free State... I want to just look, look at, the, at the things that he, he did. And we'll even we'll, we'll, we'll look at that in there, man. Um, yeah, let's let's we'll reference that. So Leopold amassed a huge personal fortune by exploiting the natural resources of the Congo. At first, ivory was exported, but this did not yield the expected levels of revenue. When the global demand for rubber exploded, attention shifted to the labor-intensive collection of sap from rubber plants. Abandoning, abandoning the promises of the Berlin Conference in the late 1890s, the Free State's governments restricted foreign access and extorted forced labor from the natives. Abuses, especially in the rubber industry, included forced labor of the native population, beatings, widespread killings, and frequent mutilation when production quarters were not met. Missionary John Harris of Baringa was so shocked by what he had encountered that he wrote to Leopold's chief agent in the Congo saying, I have just returned from a journey inland to the village of Insongo Umboyo. The abject misery and utter abandon is positively indescribable. I was so moved, Your Excellency, by the people's stories that I took the liberty of promising them that in the future you will only kill them for crimes they commit. <laughs> for crimes they commit. Um, so you look here. A father stares at the hand and foot of his five-year-old daughter, severed as a punishment for harvesting too little rubber. 
Um, estimates, estimates of the death toll range from 1 to 15 million since accurate records were not kept, which means that this number isn't accurate. So it could very easily be 20 million or 25 million. So it could be a lot more than that. Historians Louis and Stengers in 1968 stated that the population figures at the start of Leopold's control are only wild guesses and that attempts by E.D. Morrill and others to determine a figure for the loss of population were but figments of the imagination. Um, uh, so roughly half the population perished during the Free State period. Hotchard pointed that since the first official census by the Belgian authorities in 1924 put the population at about 10 million, these various approaches suggest a rough estimate of a population decline by 10 million. Um, so yeah. And here's my thing here. Is records shown? Because remember, what this guy was doing was at a time when it was hard to keep records. Hence why they don't actually know how many this guy killed. <laughs> so all they know that this guy killed millions and pretty much decimated half a country. And then you say to yourselves that why don't we really know more about this? And the reason for that is this. And I think this is where we now have to be real here. It goes back to something that I call racial relativity. You feel more for someone of your race than someone not of your race. So, and this is now where we now have to get honest and real. Because I always say that honesty is the key. A white person seeing billions of black people just massacred and cut to pieces, they'd be like, oh my, that's bad. And they'll feel a way about it, you know. But a white person seeing millions of white people, white kids, severed, mass massacred, and mutilated, like a bunch of white children, their heads chopped off, feet chopped off, and so forth, they will feel more for that because of ra racial relativity. So you showing like the white bodies that a crazy tyrant killed, that is gonna be more, have a larger effect in a world ruled by white people because white people rule the world that we're in and they've ruled this world for hundreds and hundreds of years. So because they rule the world, their pain is gonna be put at the forefront of your pain. That's just how human psychology works. You know, we don't live in a utopia where everyone's pain is the same as everyone's pain. No, in the real world, my pain is more important than your pain. And I'm going to make you care. I'm going to make you care more about my pain than about your pain. But when you now see black bodies being seven and caught, millions caught and everything, the world that we live in, that just isn't, that just isn't as effective as white bodies. So... You can tell the story and I can show this video of Leopold II and do all the stuff that he did. White people can try to, to care and they'll want to care, but they simply will not care as much or feel as affected by it as if they showed it of someone that happened to white people. So if you showed a white person this image, let's change the racial dynamic of this image. So let us let this guy be white and let this be the severed foot and hand of a blonde white girl. Oh, oh sorry, put that, oh, sorry. Okay, here we go. So let this person be white and let this hand and foot be the severed foot and hand of a white, blonde, blue eyed girl. So that is a white, young, five year old girl. Hey, basically, that's a five year old white, blonde girl, severed hand and severed foot and her white father looking at that. That image gets shown to white people. Leopold II is, a, is a, a demon. He is a demon, he is the devil. And the media will show him to be the devil. And the reality is this, and people will, they don't, they don't wanna accept this. 
a white person looking at, at this, they will not feel as affected as if this image was of a white man and those severed limbs were from the foot of a blonde, blue-eyed, white girl. So the reason why we don't really know about Leopold II, why he isn't really in the forefront is he did it to black people. And it's like, yeah, black people, yeah, they, they, they always, especially Africans, yeah, you know, Africans always suffer. And it, it's, African suffering is normalized. So you almost become, so the world and the system of the world, they try to desensitize you, desensitize um, black suffering and your feeling towards black suffering, where it almost becomes norm, normalized. But white people suffering, that's not normal. That's not, that's not normal. But the starving African child, the African child that is living in a shanty town that is suffering, the slave things and everything. Oh my gosh, this is so bad. So bad. But you know, you just, you, you, you get used to it. But you don't, you will never get used to it. And the world will never allow you to get used to seeing white, eh, the severed limbs of white kids. Because like, this image is so sick. It is so disgusting. It is so messed up. And it shows the depths of evil that it's <laughs> like it's, it's almost like my god you know and the scary thing is this it even goes back to slavery is that you see during hitler's times with the jews because that happened between 39 and 45 1939 45 you can get a lot of accounts of the stuff that happened but when you're now dealing and also remember that happened on european soil but when you're now dealing with stuff that happened in the 1800s and you're now dealing with the content of Africa, specifically Congo, it makes it very hard to get those records. So Wikipedia is just giving us fragments. Your book, your research book, your library book, your research thing, these are just fragments. Lord only knows what he did because you had free, you had free reign here. Because these people you are literally property to you. <laughs> property that you're just using to get rubber and do on whatever material that you need. And remember, this is a time in which that's which is still prevalent now, but specifically back then was white supremacy and the black man being this inferior race. So when you're looking at a race that for you are lower than dogs that you treat your dog better than you do this black man, you're like, you can do anything with them. You're like, mates, if you don't do that rubber, I will do whatever it is <laughs> to ensure you get that rubber, you know, because you're not human. You know, you're subhuman, you're sub-dog. <laughs> so, but it goes back to ed education. Why would that be, if you're in a school in Europe, why the hell would they teach you about King Leopold II? <laughs> Why? For what reason? Like, what's so? Education in school isn't just general education. Like, oh no, no, we're just learning about history. No, 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 you're not, you're not learning history. You're learning a particular type of history, and you're learning a history that we want you to learn because we want to give you a specific idea about this country you're living in. I want you to give you a specific idea about the white man specific idea about Europe. Why the hell am I, t am I going to teach a 10 year old kid about the evil that Europeans did and about how they severed limbs and just cut people, people open <laughs> for no le legitimate reason? Why? So, so just don't get it twisted. School and education and the government are like this. They're fully like, like this because a country knows how important education is and they know how important it is to indoctrinate the youth in propaganda and in giving them a specific history so they buy into the myth of their country. When you look at the British Empire, no, we need to teach people about the myth that Britain is great and is this great country that, that did these great amazing things that didn't go over and just fuck up countries and colonize countries and just pretty much wreck and just mess up Africa and the dynamics of Africa and, and, and so forth and just left it in a, in a messed up state where they're not feeling the effects now no more. We can't do that because that destroys the image, you know? So in Belgium, we can't teach the horrors of King Leopold the, the, the second who just 
went to the Congo and just went rampant and just murdered and just massacred people. And they're still feeling the effects to this day, you know? So it is always very important that school, that's, school is just education just for you to get great. It's not really ed- 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 education. For me, I look, look at school as this is not, it is edu- it is in it's a, it's an edu- education of necessity it, and that necessity being i need to get a job <laughs> okay i need this grade to, to get to get a job this is the stuff that is it's not the full thing okay i need I just just general education but boom but as soon as you leave you now have to now fully educate yourself independently and thank the lord for the internet where you can now get all this stuff or your library or your or your different professors and so forth that I, that I cannot teach you through history. So for me, Hitler isn't the most evil person. He's one of, but not the most. <laughs> Look up, shout out to your white slave master, shout out to your, to your boy Genghis Khan, shout out to your boy King Leopold the Second, or your boy Idi Amin. But Hitler is promoted as the most evil person because he did evil to the Im- to to, to an, a white image, so Jewish people are more closer to white than they are to black. So the white man's world will feel a way to that. So the closest thing to white people being totally massacred and destroyed and just cut to pieces and and so forth, in the most inhumane way and uh, and unjustified way, is what Hitler did to the Jews. But white media or the white school, the European school, why a bunch. Of- Millions of blacks got severed, caught open, kids got caught open. Yeah, but that's black people. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not white. They're black. So why are we going to teach that in our schools here? You know, no, so it's, 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 it's not really going to gonna, gonna pop off, you know. So, but that's what I just say. So it's, it's important to educate yourself. Always important to educate yourself. Your, your school will not tell you the whole history because they have an agenda. And the agenda is linked into creating a false image of their of their of their country for you to buy into their hype and their myth that the country wants to perpetuate. History is written by the conquered. No, yeah, no, history is written by the conquerors, not the conquered. There you go. Thanks for watching the vid, and don't forget to head to the official website for extra cool content at Half Hope Hot dot com